let's chat, shall we? So in this video, I am embarking on a quick little journey to recreate one of the mock-up dresses that I just made more specifically. This one, Simplicity S8876, uh, which is a tube dress. And I spent some time over on Instagram kind of playing around with the fit of it, and the reason for that is because I want to remake it and properly make it for a wedding that I'm going to in a week. So I thought it would be fun to take this opportunity to kind of show you some of the um, kind of the specifics and to show you the difference between making a mock-up and all of the little things that I'm cutting out and speeding through and cheating through just to get it finished so that I can try it on and see what it looks like um, to show you the difference between that and all of the little things that I would actually take my time on to make a real dress and to make it look really nice and as professional as I can do. So if you're looking for more of a step-by-step -step how to put this pattern together, I'd recommend you check out my previous video on this, which I'll link in a card up here, and I'll also probably try to remember to link in the description down below, because this is going to be kind of more like little snippets and little details of things that I'm changing, so I'm not going to go super into detail about like, oh, now I'm going to attach this piece to this piece, and we're going to do this to this piece, and you know, all that stuff. So I have a little bit of this kind of started a little bit. So the first thing I did was I actually took my mock-up and I and I made a couple of like little alterations where I, I messed with the bodice a little bit. Um, I took the back seam in a little bit. I played around with the neckline a little bit and all of that was really just to see if there were any changes that I wanted to make for the actual nice finished dress. So right off the bat, the first change that I'm going to make is I'm going to cut it out on a size 18 instead of a size 20. Now I was looking at the back of the pattern and granted, I did have to kind of grade this up to a size 20, so I'm doing what I assume the size 20 would be. But the difference in the bust measurement of the finished bodice between the size 18 and the size 20 is only an inch and a half. And when I took the dress in and when I installed the zipper to make it fit a little bit nicer, I wound up taking probably close to two inches away on each side. So I'm, I'm very confident that if I cut down to a size 18, it will fit similarly, probably still a little bit big, but similarly to how this modified size 20 fits on me now. And I think that might kind of help with the uh, bodice or the, the top of the bodice issue. I think it might make it fit a little bit closer to me. So that is the first change that I'm making. And as far as I know, that's really the only major change that I'm making is I'm cutting it out on sl a slightly smaller size. So I have my fabric picked and pre-washed. It is hanging up in our spare bathroom to dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my steamer and I'm going to steam out all of the wrinkles that happened when I washed it. I am working with a kind of a sky blue polyester that has a little bit of a stretch to it. Once I put in some interfacing in the lining, the stretch might not really be applicable anymore, but it's there. The point is it's polyester, so I want to iron it as little as possible because I I don't like ironing polyester because it has a tendency to melt at a high enough temperatures and I'm a little bit accident prone, which I'm also kind of planning ahead for because while I was at Joann's buying the fabric for it, I actually chose that shade of blue based on a lace that they had on like, on like spot clearance sale. It was really cheap. It wound up being like I bought about a yard of it and I think it wound up being like six dollars for the yard. Like it was stupid cheap and so I have this really pretty kind of goldy, almost bronzy um, metallic lace. So I spent a decent amount of time last night cutting out some appliques. I'm fully anticipating having to cut out some more. Um, but I went around the store holding up that lace two different colors and I think that it looks really nice on that blue. It kind of goes for like a like a sand and sea, sun and sea kind of vibe, which I'm all about. So I'm going to get that sewn and probably cut out and then I'll show you kind of what I'm thinking for these like lace appliques. After I finish my cup of tea because that's a it's a very light fabric and this is a very dark tea. So I'm gonna make sure that I, I finish all of this and get this out the way before I start working on my very very light fabric. Which, if you're curious, I got this specific tea on Amazon. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's supposedly the same blend that Marie Antoinette liked to drink in Versailles, and it's made with like fruits and flowers from the gardens of Versailles. I don't know if I buy into it, but uh, it's pretty good. So I just wanted to show you an idea of kind of what I'm working with. Um, so here I have probably this is a like version two or three of what I have on the pockets, and I really like how this works out. So I'm probably going to do the pockets like this. Um, and then here on the bottom, 
I have just a little little touch of a little something something here um, I'm probably gonna cut something really tiny to go in this corner right here but this is kind of what I'm thinking uh, maybe something kind of like that around the top I don't want anything too crazy or too intense um, just just a little something something to break up what would be all of that blue so right off the bat, I already am doing a couple of things really differently. The first thing that I'm doing is when I'm pinning into this fabric, I noticed that it was kind of hard to pin into because there's a little bit of um, there's a little bit of spandex in here, so some of the threads in the fabric are elastic, like elastic kind of or elastic adjacent. Anyway, sometimes when you pin into it, it doesn't pin through. It kind of just catches and stretches the thread if you hit right on it. So in order to make sure that none of that is going to show up on the final garment, I'm going to make sure that my pins are all within that 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I'm making sure that my pins are within 5 8 of an inch from the outside of all of my pieces. I am also taking super duper care to make sure that I am being really picky about my grain line. Now this fabric is very shiny and there's a sheen to it, which means there's a very good chance that this sheen will reflect differently from different angles. So in order to make the whole dress look cohesive and to make sure that the shine is all kind of reflecting in the same direction, um, I'm going to be really picky about the grain line to make sure everything is perfectly on grain. And a good way to kind of test and make sure that you are on your grain is to kind of put your fingers on either side of this arrow, this grain line arrow, and tug. And if you're not getting any sort of stretching, that means that you're on the grain line, you're on the straight grain, you're not gonna have to worry about it. If you tug and you're getting a little bit of stretching, it means you're on the bias, which means that at least one of the layers of fabric isn't perfectly straight. And it is worth it to take your time, rearrange everything and make sure everything is perfectly straight. So as an example, something I didn't notice when I made the mock-up of this is that this line right here is not perfectly parallel to the grain line. So I think when I cut this out on my mock-up, I lined this up with the grain line, but I needed to line this up with the grain line, so it's not perfect. So just, you know, double check everything, double check your grain line, make sure that you're cutting everything out on grain. So I have all of my pieces cut out, and for my lining and also my interfacing, I'm going to be using this um, just 100% cotton that I have in my stash. I had about a yard of it and it wound up being just about perfect. Um, it wasn't 100% enough, but all of the like weird edges on some of the pieces fall within the seam allowance, so I'm not worried about it. Um, so instead of doing like feasible interfacing, I'm instead going to flatline my bodice pieces where there should be interfacing. So I'm just going to kind of base on some um, these lining pieces onto the back side of my actual nice fabric. And that's just gonna give it a little bit more structure, a little bit more stability, and basically do kind of similar to what the interfacing is, but without using actual interfacing. And part of the reason I'm doing that is because I am terrified of ironing on polyester and having to do iron-on interfacing onto polyester, because even though I'm sure there's a way that you could do it and with pressing cloths and all that good stuff, you could do it, but I just, I don't trust myself to not melt the polyester, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna flatline it and not worry about potentially melting everything. So for the most part, I'm just going to, you know, attach all of the interfacing to the lined pieces. So another difference is that I am using this water-soluble marking pencil instead of, you know, bright neon highlighter. I am also going to change the needle on my machine. I'm going to find one of my thinnest needles and I'm going to use that. I'm also going to go ahead and wind two full bobbins of this thread that I had in my stash that luckily matches just about perfectly. So I think the only thing I need to go to the store and get for this is actual technical boning if I if I feel like it or I might just do some zip ties again and I need a zipper that matches this fabric because I don't have one that matches in my stash. So another trick that you should consider if you're flat lining garments especially ones that you're going to have to sew darts into like this one is I'm going to also based on the inside of both of these lines and I'm going to do that for all of the darts and the reason that I'm doing that is to make sure that when I fold this into the dart and pin it and sew it that everything lays nice and flat and you know I'm not going to have to worry about maybe this outer fabric pulling away from the lining fabric so that way everything is going to get sewn nice and properly so I'm probably going to do it from the center out and I'm just going to baste 
along here on the inside. And the reason I'm doing this on the inside and not on the outside is because I don't want there to be any um, like stitch marks from the needle, from the needle poking holes. So even if I were to go and rip out all the seams um, afterwards, I just don't want to have any leftover holes there. So I'm doing it on the inside so I don't have to worry about that. All right, so since I'm cutting out my dress out of a different size than my mock-up, I went ahead and I did my lining first so that in case I needed to make any changes, I could adjust everything on my lining and then I will know what I'm doing by the time I get around to sewing the fashion fabric. So it looks like everything is going to fit pretty well. Um, I'm just kind of trying to hold it up in the back and it looks like I should have just about the right seam allowance if I were to sew up this back seam, um, which gives me some good feelings. Oh, there's a bug crawling on my wall. Gross. It's like right over there. It's gross. Um, I will kill that in a minute. Um, but everything is hitting about where it should be. My side seams are on my sides. Um, it's a little floppy, but once I get all the boning and everything, it'll be fine. So this gives me enough confidence to go ahead and get my main fabric uh, starting to get everything put together. So the dress is going together pretty well. Um, but I did want to say one more change that I'm making, hopefully you can see, is that since this is a stretch satin, I wanted this waist seam to be able to stretch a little bit if it needed to, so I sewed this with a zigzag seam instead of with a straight seam. Um, so I'm going to wait until tomorrow when I go get the zipper to do up the back seam, uh, and that's mostly so I know where to do up the back seam. Uh, but right now, I'm actually going to get started on a uh, matching necktie for my fiancé. All right, so it's been a day or two, and um, I've gotten a lot done. I had to take a break because I didn't have a zipper, but I have a zipper now. So now I'm going to install the zipper, and I'm going to do it the way that the instructions tell me to. So the first thing I have to do, or basically what I have to do right now, is install the invisible zipper as normal, but just on this kind of outer portion. Um, so I was kind of holding it up to me, and... and like pseudo pinning the dress on and I needed to take it in just the tiniest little bit. I think that's going to help it fit nicely and I think that's also going to help kind of distribute the weight a little bit more because it's going to cinch in on my waist and my waist can kind of like support the top a little bit. I hope that makes sense uh, because I did forget to buy boning. Like I don't know why I just completely forgot so I will be using my uh, little zip ties again to bone this dress. Anyway, so hopefully um, if I lined this up right and I eyeballed everything right, this should be, um, or I should be putting a seam right on about the one inch uh, line. And I also didn't want to start the zipper teeth too far up because when we go to install the lining, we will be sewing a 5 8 an inch seam allowance here, so I didn't want any of the teeth to get kind of caught up in here. It's a little hard to sew through. So I probably will need to put in a hook right at the top, a hook and eye. But just for now, I'm going to get this zipper installed and I have my little handy dandy little invisible zipper foot that I got for like, I don't know, six dollars on Amazon? How much did I pay for this? Anyway, highly recommend. This is so much better than using that like plastic one that falls apart and you never can figure out how to put it on your machine. All right, so the zipper is in. Um, it is a little bit hard to zip up and zip down, which I haven't really had a problem with before, but it's mostly because this material kind of wants to get into the zipper. Um, but I'm pretty sure that once I actually like put the dress on and there's a little bit of tension holding it out and making sure that all of this fabric kind of gets pulled away from the zipper, I think a lot of that issue is going to go away. Okay, so now that I have the zipper on, I am going to focus on doing up the rest of this back seam of the skirt. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of turn this inside out. I'm going to make sure that the zipper, kind of bottom of the zipper, which this is a longer zipper than what the um, pattern calls for. The pattern calls for a 16 inch invisible zipper. I couldn't find a 16 inch invisible zipper. I could find a 12 to 14 inch and then a 20 to 22 inch or like an 18 to 22 inch to 20 inch something like that but I couldn't find any that had 16 inches so I just picked the uh the longer one I think this one's a 20 to 22 inch and I just figured if I have a longer zipper oh well it's fine like it's not the end of the world if my zipper's too long so now what I'm going to do is um just sew up the rest of this back seam and I'm just going to continue that one inch seam allowance so I'm going to pin this kind of end to the zipper out of the way and fold this back up and just continue the sewing. So remember, you want this to come through the seam allowance. I've, I've sewn a couple of dresses where I just like poke it through the other side because I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to see that. I want to tuck it away. And no, it needs to get it needs to get brought up that side. So I am going to kind of pull this out of the way, 
and then stitch this all the way down. All right, so here's where we are with the dress. Um, I just tried it on real quick. I'm really happy with it. Like it's not, it's not super tight, but I actually kind of like it. And um, I'm, I'm really not mad at all the little like kind of rippling going on. I think a lot, I think some of that will be fixed when I get the boning and the lining in. Um, but I, I kind of like it actually. <laughs> I think it's fun. Um, one thing I do definitely want to change is I want the skirt to kind of taper in a little bit more. Um, it's still basted shut, but there is going to be a little bit of a slit in the front of this. So I really don't think I need this to be like straight down. I think it might look a little bit better if I taper it in just a little bit. So I marked with pins what should be a relatively even point all the way around the skirt to kind of start the taper. And I'm basically just going to taper it in probably just starting even with the seam allowance and then bring it in hopefully about one more inch on each side all around. Um, so yeah, I'm probably gonna do that and then start working on the lining and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I like the shape of this much better. So now I'm gonna go get all of everything that I just did pressed uh, and then go start working on the lining which I have most of the lining done. I did most of that last night. I think I just need to put in the bones and then actually like install the lining. And then we're gonna tack. And then this time around, we're actually gonna do a lot of the hand sewing that needs to be hand sewing. So we're gonna, we're gonna be doing a lot of that today. All right, so now I am installing the zipper the way that they want me to. Uh, so here I have, you can't really tell. Um, so the lining is attached at the top and understitched, but at this kind of top corner, I unpicked the understitching by about, it's probably about an inch and a half so that I could do the zipper the way that they want me to. So I put my zipper foot on my machine. So I have that. I'm going to work with that. But now for the zipper, we are going to sew on the edge side. So on this side of the zipper all the way down. And when we do that, it's going to kind of neatly enclose everything so that when we turn everything right side out, we're gonna have no raw edges showing uh, and it's gonna look nice and neat. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of the lining. And then, then I think we do the hem. Yeah. Then we do a whole bunch of hand sewing, but I think if I remember correctly, I think that's the last big like machine thing that we have to do. All right, so I have the hem mostly done, but I just wanted to show you the stitch that I'm using. So I'm using kind of a cross stitch and I'm keeping my stitches really loose. And the reason I'm doing that is because it will allow this to stretch as I walk and as I move. Um, so basically the way I'm doing it is I'm just taking my needle and I'm kind of working backwards yet forwards. So I'm moving forward and when I take um, fabric from this outer edge I only take a couple of threads like maybe two or three and I, I'm moving forward but I'm sending the needle backward and then pulling and then that way I can come take the hem and I usually take a bigger chunk on the hem usually go through the uh, thing and pull it back and I can keep working like this. That's a little much. And this is how I am doing the hem. Um, I will probably be either slip stitching or whip stitching one of the two, the, um, the lining, the bottom of the lining to the seam allowance. So I might not film that, but this is how I am doing the hem. Or I might do this exact same thing up on there. Haven't decided yet. We'll figure it out when we get there. All right, so I'm moving on to the lining and I'm noticing that it's not really lining up where I want it to. Um, and I'm not really gonna be able to attach this to the seam allowance, which is what I want to do so that, you know, I won't see any stitches on the outside. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to sew this shut with a really kind of relatively narrow seam allowance and that's to keep everything kind of neatly tucked under and I'm going to skip over, you know, pick up my needle move and skip over the bones. And instead what I'm going to do is I do have a lot of um, seam allowances and darts in the skirt. So instead I'm just going to match up um, the lining and I'm going to tack everything down to all of these seam allowances and all of the darts so that everything is still nice and secured but I won't have to worry about seeing stitch marks on the outside. 
And then I'm going to move on to, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to sew the lace on tonight or if I'm just going to place it tonight, but we'll, we'll see when we get there. All right, so here we have essentially a finished dress. I'm really happy with how this came out. It's a little loose, but I'm not particularly worried about it. It feels secure. It feels like it's not going to like get, you know, pushed down. Yeah, so now I'm going to get my appliques placed on. Probably not going to sew them tonight, it's kind of late, um, but I will at least get everything set up to get stitched on tomorrow. So now it's time to just start tacking all of these lace appliques onto um, a couple of parts of the dress. I think I'm just going to do the pockets and a little bit on the front of the hem. I don't want anything too crazy, I don't want anything too involved, and I think this is just a nice little just a nice little accent that I think is going to look really good. So I have my, my thread, I have my needle, I have my wand, some scissors, I have a twitch stream uh, ready to go and a little kitty cat over there napping away. Um, that will hopefully stay out of the way because she's been climbing all over my stuff today. But yeah, once this is done, this dress is, the dress is done. And here we go. Here is the final dress, finally finished. Um, what it looks like when it's actually like nicely and properly done. I'm not sold on the shoes though. I think the shoes might be a bit much and they don't really fit the style, you know? Anyway, I really like how this turned out. I really like how it looks. I feel like it's very... Hi kitten. Do you want to come say hi? Okay, gotta close the door now. <laughs> I feel like it's very like Dolce & Gabbana-esque kind of. Feeling. I think a lot of that is just this swirly metallic rose gold lace, which I'm really happy about. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it entertaining, if not educational, and I hope it was fun to kind of watch the differences between um, when I'm making a mock-up just real quick to get it on my body and versus when I'm actually taking my time to properly make a garment. So yeah, if you liked stuff like this, go ahead and let me know that by leaving me a comment, leave me a like, um, subscribe to this channel if you like this kind of sewing content. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.